How you doing folks? We're here in Fossa today, just outside Killarney um, for the group of friends really, not really advertised um, get together with a couple of vintage combines um, vintage, there's a Trasher, there's a, a Massey Harris I think it's a 701 Bearer we'll give a look at that and maybe we get a, an in-depth look at that and um, we'll go from there, there's a very old DNA combine um, there's a couple of more Yorks, what's that? there's a John Deere there's a couple of New Hollands, there's a Massey Ferguson, they're all coming. We're going to swing on the camera, we're going to get a look at them. All the money raised here today is going to Recovery Haven and um, yeah. So we'll swing the camera and um, we'll get a, a look at them and we'll see what they're all doing. Here we have the DNA reversing back. She's a DNA 7000 hydrostatic. And I presume he's going offloading. So we're going to look at him offloading there now as well. Of course, the here were a, a savage machine, I think. DNA was bought out by class. I'm not exactly too sure but I think they were. So maybe can somebody can tell me whether they were or they weren't. Like we all know the DNA there, there's another DNA above. We'll give a look at that in a minute. Um she's the DNA trail company. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Here coming down against us now we have a New Holland. Um, the biggest problem with these and these I suppose these machines is keeping them going. Um, a friend of mine there recently had a New Holland um, don't even ask me the model but something similar to this but they had a cab and um, the biggest problem was they couldn't get parts for it and the combine was actually going absolutely perfect there was nothing wrong with the combine but they couldn't get parts it was inside the shade and storage for I suppose four or five years and eventually they just eventually unfortunately I suppose they broke it up um, a lot of the parts were sold and just given away to other fellas that had similar model machines. Um, it was something very similar to this. I think this is a 1520. So you can see the reel there taking in the stuff. This up his reel. Yeah, a 1520. I think the one that, that I'm just talking about there that might have been broke up. It could very well have been a 1510. That's a, a 1520. I could say the difference is there's a one or two um, drums inside it for shaking out the grain. Of course the combine, the combine harvester and the trasher, um, they're both very, very, very similar machines in that the trasher is more or less the same thing on it's it's a trasher on wheels and here coming down against us we have a Massey Ferguson 307 of course Massey Ferguson of course last year celebrated in 2022 the 175th um, anniversary. Ah. Anniversary, the fumes are getting me. Massey Ferguson, of course. Uh, Ferguson joined up with Massey Harris sometime in the 60s. And then become a Massey Harris Ferguson. And then eventually they dropped the Harris just to become Massey Ferguson, a Canadian company, Massey Harris.
again like you think about it, what fantastic machines these would have been imagine this coming into your farm uh, sometime in the 60s early 70s and like before that you all you had was maybe the reaper and binder and the trasher this would have been uh, an outstanding machine to see it coming fella told me one time he was blowing west cork they had a big dozer um, a fiat alice dozer and okay it's not a massive journey nowadays but he reckoned when they bought the dozer new um, people traveled from all over the county all over even up as far as Tipperary to see this bulldozer in action some of you might know him Sean O'Sullivan from West Cork I guess from Skibbereen he told me that story Sean another big big vintage man we have another New Holland, another 1520 coming here against us on this side. What a fantastic, absolutely fantastic machine. Okay, they're only a 10 foot cut, but you have to remember this time in the 60s and the 70s there was, I'm not too sure of the name of it, but there was a thing brought in in Ireland um, around the time of the war um, that every farmer had to set a certain amount of oats and a certain amount of fodder beef and sugar beef and all this to feed the nation. That was done back in the, the 1940s and 1950s and it was still there right up until the, kind of the 1970s until we suppose we joined Europe. Um, that's when they got rid of that. There was a thing, you had to grow a certain amount of, of, of barley and oats and I suppose edible food as well. Nowadays, there's probably big, big, which there is big, big massive tillage farms and there's big massive dairy farms and that time um, they had to, you had to diversify you had to have a bit of everything you had to have your own chickens and hens and everything else to go along with it we'll give one look over and we'll give a look at the DNA cutting coming down the other side all right guys we have to come across the field here the DNA is coming against us again is it a D-R-O-N-N-I-N a Dronenborg I have an awful feeling these were bought out by class. I'm not too sure, maybe if you can leave it in the comments below. I think they were bought out by class at some stage. And that's a 14 or 15 foot head on it. Um, lovely looking machine. I like the colours of them. And um, that's another DNA above there. We can zoom in on this. That's the DNA trail combine. This is the DNA self-propelled. What happened DNA, like I said, I think that's bottom out. the tank there to see the seat team to it. We're 
not emptying it? Yeah, he's not emptying the tank. Oh, he's emptying the tank. You might, maybe we'll see in a second now. He's gone emptying the tank. We'll give a quick look here at what this stuff is. I think this, the best of my knowledge, is barley. And the John Deere coming down to empty as well. That is it. There are the years of barley. If any of you didn't want to drink porter tonight, that's more or less what it is. Inside of that you have the... That's it, that's what it's all about, lads. Just that. And um, it grows, it's an awful, awful lot of work. It's a, I suppose it's a slow growing crop, really and truthfully. Um, this was probably set sometime in the spring of earlier this year, 2023. It's now the 10th of September, 2023. So, um, let's see him over, we'll swing the camera. He's just emptying there into the trailer. As far as I know, all this barley is going into the brewery in Killarney. Um, it's already after being sold. Um, the brewery in Killarney have bought the barley and they're going to use the barley for their for the brewery for making making beer. So the Dania is out and the 955 John Deere is coming in. It's offload. John Deere, of course, another American company. One story about John Deere, um, I suppose, I, when I drove the tour buses, um, I had a lady on the bus one time and she told me her father was um, a John Deere dealer in America. And she told me that, I said, you know, John Deere, look, how did they take off? Do you know how did, it's like John Deere is such a massive, massive company now, like, and you know you can think about Adco and and what's C and they C and H and all them and New Holland and like they're big companies but they have emerged with several companies John Deere okay they merged with Waterloo Boy and a few more of them and um, I can't think of the other names but you know, they're still big companies but she said John Deere during the recession in America she often heard her father talking about it in the was the forties that John Deere had their own finance and John Deere that time, they actually never went out. A lot of other companies, they had no other choice. They went out and they repossessed um, the machinery because the, um, I suppose the farmer couldn't pay for them. But John Deere never ever repossessed any machinery during the Great Depression in America. And John Deere's theory was, what's the point having me having yards of I suppose partly used tractors and partly used plows and machinery and so on. Um, he said, we will come out of this and the farmer, the farmer stayed with him. They stayed with John Deere and they stayed loyal to John Deere to this day. The story with the green and yellow is supposed to be that the green and yellow is the harvest. That's apparently where the colour came from. Of course, John Deere again, a bit like Massey Ferguson. John Deere was, um, he didn't really like farming and his first invention was the plough. He came up with the idea of the plow, and um, he kind of went from there.
a massive selection of machinery here today guys there's one two three four combines there's the trailed combine above i think that's belonged to dennis tagney there's the the treasure belonged to dennis tagney and there's a lovely zetter 8011 with a welder baler i'm really hoping they're going to get that going and um we have brendan ferris above with his e27n and i think it's a is it a 701 um massey harris baler so if you want to see all them keep tuned give a like give a subscribe and um we'll make two or three videos here today and um we'll put them up one by one and um look out for part two and maybe part three and possibly part four all right guys give a like give a subscribe and uh, we'll see you all in the next one